Christmas, for many, is the happiest time of the year, a time of joy, love, family, presents and holidays. When you think about Christmas, you remember getting up before sunrise and seeing what Santa had left under the tree, or having Christmas lunch with the family and eating so much you ended up looking like a Christmas bauble. I remember the smell of the kitchen when Mum would start cooking all of her Christmas goodies. Like many others, for me, Christmas was a time of fond memories and I'd like to keep it that way, but unfortunately in December 2012, at the tender age of 19, I was diagnosed with cancer. On the afternoon of the 12th of December, sitting at the doctors, nervously waiting for the results of my CT scan, I felt slightly relieved knowing that I was going to get answers for why I'd been in pain for months, but anxious because I didn't know the cause. At this point, I had no idea what my life was about to change forever. Dr. King walked into the room, closing the door behind her. There's no easy way to say this, so I'm just going to say it. Jade, you have cancer. Every muscle in my body tensed up, and I froze. I looked at Mum as the tears started to run down her cheeks. I had no idea how to react to the news. Cancer hadn't even crossed my mind. I mean, why would it? I'm too young to go through this, something like this, right? I was a 19-year-old kid with his whole future ahead of him and now I had cancer. I was numb. Thousands of questions rushed through my head. The biggest question of all, how am I supposed to tell people that I have cancer? How am I supposed to tell my two younger brothers, the ones that look up to me for advice and support? We travelled home feeling shattered, not knowing what the future would hold, or if I would have a future at all. As soon as I saw my brothers, my heart sank. They knew something was wrong. I tried to tell them, but words wouldn't come only tears. After multiple tests and days in hospital, on Christmas Eve we found out it was Ewing sarcoma, a rare form of bone cancer. As a family, we agreed that we were still going to have a great Christmas because we are Simpsons and Christmas is our time of the year. Although it wasn't as cheerful as years gone by, we also enjoy our day as much as possible. We were scheduled to be at the Wesley Hospital in Brisbane at 7am on Boxing Day, so Mum, Dad and I headed down early. We seemed calm, but we were all extremely nervous. We met with the nurses who assured us that Dr. Bashford is the best in the business. Dr. Bashford explained the situation, and I was feeling very confident until he said that I had less than a 25% chance of surviving. I was standing in front of a man I had just met, telling me that it was unlikely that I would win the most important battle of my life. After that sentence, every other word was just noise and I spent the rest of the day trying to make sense of everything. I started treatment the next day and spent the rest of the year in hospital. The following months saw me travelling back and forth to Brisbane for treatment. I began stem cell transplant in mid-August. No amount of planning could have prepared us for the emotional trauma we experienced during this time. It was frightening as I required hourly monitoring when my heart rate and blood pressure dropped well below average and I spent the next two weeks being closely monitored in hospital. I constantly reminded myself that each day is a step closer to going home, a step closer to being normal again, a step closer to surviving. All the while, I still wondered, what if I have gone through all this treatment and it hasn't worked? On the 29th of October 2013, I received the news that I had been longing to hear. Hi Jake, it's John Bashford speaking. Your scans look great. You are now in an ongoing remission. I hopped off the phone, smiling ear to ear, excited to tell everyone. I was relieved knowing that all the treatment I had been through had been worth it. I took on cancer and won. I spent the next 15 months in remission, getting back into the life of a normal 20-year-old. I started working again, playing soccer, hanging with mates, doing things that I hadn't been able to do for so long. I was living again. Grateful for each and every day. Then the unthinkable happened. On Tuesday the 27th of January 2015, I was told I had relapsed. I was overcome with frustration and anger. Why me? Why can't I live like everyone else? What did I do to be tortured this way, again? None of it seemed fair, but yet here I was, a second time with cancer at the age of 21. I received more intense treatment for another five months but further PET scans showed that the treatment wasn't working. None of us could understand. 
I'd been feeling great over the last couple of weeks and I was living a normal life, yet I was being told that I wasn't getting any better. We certainly didn't expect these results. Frustration was setting in. Everything we were trying seemed to be making me worse. The doctor was unsure how to proceed. We tried five rounds of other chemo drugs before I was overcome by such intense pain that I had to be admitted to hospital. The doctor said there wasn't much else from a treatment point of view that we could try and all he could give us was a time frame and painkillers to make me more comfortable. All of the hurdles I had jumped through, all of the poison that had run through my body, all of the car trips, all of the money, to be told that was it. I would spent many nights over the years sitting up thinking about this moment, how I would react. I look at my friends around me, their lives moving forward, looking to settle down and building their futures, buying houses, starting families, while me, I've just been told that I won't experience any of these things that so many take for granted. My worst nightmare had come true. There are no words to describe what I was feeling. After I calmed down, I sat with mum and dad and suggested that my remaining time be spent travelling and doing things I've never done. I told my best friend Melissa Holman and the first thing she said was, I'm in. When can I visit? We came up with ideas of places to see and things to do and made a bucket list. There is one particular item on the bucket list that I'm extremely passionate about because I don't want others to suffer what my family and I have been through. Our wish is to raise $10,000 for cancer research and to achieve this, Melissa has selflessly decided to participate in the Shape for a Cure in 2016. Any support you could give to help us achieve this target would be greatly appreciated. While I'm optimistic and certainly haven't given up, I'm also realistic. Right now at this point in my life, I want to enjoy every second and complete my bucket list with the people who mean the most to me. So please get involved in this journey by visiting the website mjbucketlist.com and leave a message of support or suggest an activity for me to add to the list. We would love to hear from you.